Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross-stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. If you are new, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and checking out my channel. I hope you like what you see. Maybe you'll stick around and subscribe. Um, I'd love to know what you're stitching, what you like to stitch. If somebody shouted me out, I'd love to know where you came from. Um, and so we can just share some more stitchy fun. And if you're a returning stitching friend, as usual, you know how much I appreciate you taking the time to check in and watch my videos. Uh, I am so appreciative that I get the chance to talk stitching with each and every one of you, basically weekly. Um, short of something coming up schedule wise. <laughs> so it is March. Can you believe it's March? I can't. It is March 1st and we are just barreling in towards spring. So I am looking forward to some nicer weather. It's not quite here yet. Uh, I think we have a rainy week ahead of us, but you know, I guess that's spring, right? In some cases. So let's just get started. I have a start and a finish to show you uh, this week. Uh, a bunch of other projects and a few other things to talk about. Before I get going with my projects, I do want to say that there is an extra video that I filmed between last week and this. I did the show and tell for the, um, I was going to say spring, but no, it was a winter. It was a winter 2024 artist trading card swap. And I showed all 118, I believe it was, uh, trading cards that came in, plus the couple that I had made. So if you would like to see that, if you are curious about what is a trading card, what they can look like, how do I decorate one, how do I finish one, how to whatever, that video plus the one from the fall has got so many great ideas. This time around, everybody, well, the first time too, uh, I was just blown away by the creativity and the different ways everybody finished. And I think for some people now, this was the second swap that they've done. And maybe they even felt a little bit more confident in uh, what they could do or how to do it. So it was just a joy to look at each and every one of them. I hope you enjoyed it if you watched it and it's there if you want it as a resource. I know for the next one, I am most definitely going to start watching them again so that I can get some ideas because we all get in our own ruts, right? So it's important for us to, you know, kind of see uh, what's out there and kind of spark something creativity in us. Uh, keep an eye out probably, um, well, the deadline's going to be a June 1st for the next one. So I will try to give you maybe, I might give you two months. So maybe around the beginning of April, maybe the first week of April, keep an eye out for the video for the next swap that we'll do. We'll do two more this year. So there'll be three for the year total. So if you want to join in, I'll mention it on my videos, keep an eye out for that extra, and I'll do all the explaining in that extra one. Okay, so let's get started with our stitches. Alrighty, I need, I did do some digitals, and you know I like to use my iPad um, to show you those. So let me go and see, where is that first one? Here it is. Okay. Uh, if you are new, I do a rotation of four different projects uh, each week. They get I try to give them a minimum of 500. If more happens, great. If not, at least they've got 500. They're big projects, so I wanna make sure that they keep getting a little bit of stitching in. And right now, uh, one of the four is Spring Quaker by Leela Studio. So that's what the original looks like. Uh, I did change up the fabric. I am changing up the floss colors so that it looks a little more springy for me. It's beautiful in the original, and I have seen people stitching it and it looks gorgeous and but i just wanted something that was a little bit more i think of spring i think of all the green coming up on the trees and the leaves and everything else and so i wanted to do something along those lines so so let me show you the oops i i can't fold it halfway anymore the fabric so we have to do this so that's where it is this is an 18 count rose hips from under the sea fabrics so it's a very pretty, pretty pink. Now I'm going to fold this over and show you. I worked on the top part basically, so I can even fold this. This is where I where I happened to work uh, this time around, and you'll see that I almost got this element done. This got a about the 500. It really didn't get much more than that, to be honest with you, and so. 
oh, I didn't get all of this done. I got a little tired of that and I did do the letter D <laughs> just to kind of shake it up a little bit. These, I mean, these, look at these. They're no joke. They are really, really quite large, but they're pretty when they're done. So I'm just continuing along. I think, I think, I think I might do the inside maybe last. I'm not 100% sure on that. Because on this one, now summer I'm not changing colors, so it's a little bit easier. On this one I am. If you see down here, there's a big empty spot. That is where, um, I can't decide, do I normally show on this side? I feel like I show on this side, so <laughs> that other side was feeling awkward. Um, there's a bunny here. The bunny is charted, I believe, to be mostly white, yes, with a little bit of a gray background. And I'm not sure how that will look here. So I haven't made a decision yet. Am I going to keep them as is, which I could, or maybe do more of a kind of a brownish bunny, maybe a light brown bunny? I don't know. That That's just a matter of, I don't mind changing colors, but sometimes it's a long process for me. Sometimes it comes and I find something right away. And then other times I'm kind of struggling with it and I'll stitch something and take it out and stitch and so on and so forth. Now, if you are interested there's two different greens here, and I think the best way to see that, these two, can you see the two here? Those are the two main elements. I did change, what else did I change? I changed the words. The words are in brown instead of black. And I did change this color with the heart, and I think I did those with the flowers so far too, because I'm pretty sure that color just didn't really work for this, um, for this color fabric. I did keep, you don't see them as well, but I did keep the pinks in these flowers, but in person they do show. And I think it's nice. Not everything has to pop and be in your face. I am not doing, um, I don't know what specialty stitch it is. Around the, was it a satin stitch? I don't know, because I don't know all the specialty stitches. You could do some sort of specialty for around the border in the white, and I'm just doing X's. I'm just doing it that way. So this one did get its did get its stitching, so it's gonna go away now at this point. And um, sometimes they come out not just that one time a month. If they fit a prompt for a challenge, I like to do them because every little bit that I do on these means that's one less little bit later on the road. And so then maybe they get a little bit finished faster. I do have the spring, no, the autumn Quaker. Uh, oh, it's not called that though from Leela Studio, but until I finish either spring or summer, I am not going to start. Ask me in the autumn. <laughs> I might be feeling that need, but I think right now I have all I can handle with the two spring and summer Quakers, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's going to be it for now. But, you know, it's not that hard to twist my arm to try a new one and start a new one. You know that. Let's see here. Oh, I need to go to look over here the next piece was not hmm. let's see here let me look here I'm not sure why this oh no it's in here I didn't transfer it over I have certain files that I put the pictures for my photos in and for some reason this didn't get transferred over that's odd oh well uh, the next one I decided to pull out I put away my winter gnome and I pulled out, so these are, I call them St. Patrick's Gnomes. They are from Wonder, Wonder Stitch UA. I originally bought them from Wonderland Ukraine. They're, they're both the same company, but they've now have a different artist drawing gnomes, I believe, on that one. So the gnomes are a different style. Uh, I don't know how many there are. And then on Wonder Stitch UA, whichever one it is, I'll put down in the description box. Oh, and... If you want my color changes for Spring Quaker, if you go to the description box, I do have listed what I did for the colors there. Um, which one am I doing here? Let's go. I have to look at it for a minute to remember which one I'm doing. There we go. I'm doing this one right here. And I'm not stitching the background. My fabric is going to... Um, replace that. And, and interestingly enough, looking at this one, this background actually is multiple yellows, and I believe it's all half stitches, 
but um, I don't need it. You'll see in a second. So that's the one I'm, I'm working on. And here he is. Oh, I love this fabric. I'm not sure you can see the sparkle. This is an opal. It's 18 count opal water nymph from Be Stitch Me. And I think it is just perfect because I mean, sparkle for St. Patrick's and the colors and everything else. What did I do? One of these days I have to go back and stitch this one little section. I worked, I continued down on the, this side of the hat. This is part of the, that one's a three leaf clover. <laughs> um, but look at, you can see, this is just going to be one of the three. So obviously it's a good size. I started working on that, filling that in, um, and going from there. I can't remember if I pulled this. I don't think I pulled this one out for a prompt for February. I just felt like stitching it. Obviously we have March, March is upon us now and St. Patrick's Day is, <coughs> excuse me, three weeks from Sunday. So two weeks from Sunday, two weeks from Sunday. So it's time to pull this, pull this guy out, see what I can do. I, I'm not necessarily going to say, okay, St. Patrick's Day is over. I'll pull him out. Um, maybe I'll continue to work on him a bit for the month of March. He should be a 25-7. I had another one picked out, but maybe I'll put him as a 25-7 and for the month of March, I'll work on him and see what I can get done during that month. That might work. Okay, well, see, I'm already changing my plans. <laughs> Good thing nothing that I do is ever written in stone. Next one is my finish. So I did get a finish on my Seasons Blessings and I did the from Lila Studio again, and this is uh, winter is what I worked on. This one was my 25-7, and I did get a finish. Oh, that looks so good. I was definitely inspired by the model color. Mine's a little pinker. It's 18 count lighthearted from Dying for Cross Stitch. And as an aside, so Dying for Cross Stitch does their fabric of the month a little different. You don't sign up for any type of recurring kind of program. Each month she... I don't know if she dyes it special. She might. And um, she puts it up for sale. And you decide that month if you want to buy it. And it's usually cheaper than the other prices of stuff. And you can get it in all the different ranges of um, fabric sizes. And so if you like blue fabrics, I'm just saying, I happen to see, I think she showed a sneak peek on her floss to, not her floss to, her Facebook and the first Friday of the month is generally when she puts them up for sale on the website. So that would be today. So if you like blue fabrics and either you have never tried dyeing for cross stitch or you'd like to, or you love them, whichever way, I would check it out. I know I'm going to be there later on potentially checking it. So that's done. Now the other two that I've done, what have I done? I've done summer and I've done the fall blessing. So all I've left is spring. I did make them into... Do I still have? No, I don't have any of them hanging up right now. I did make them into ornament kind of size and I backed them with felt. So I have to see if I have felt matching felt for this one. I'm not sure which way I want to go. If I, I'm not, I don't, there's a lot of red. So I don't know if I want to pull out any more red or if I try to find something that is similar to the green felt. We'll see. I don't have you know, tons and tons of choices of colors. So I do have to kind of work with what I have, which sometimes means that things don't get finished because if I have an idea in my head and I can't find that idea, I sometimes just say, well, then I'm not doing it until I find that color. Now, I actually have three full coverages to show you today because I finished one, I started a rotation of another, and then I actually had a new start for leap day. So you get to see lots of full coverage. If I can find, I am not having, oh, there it is. Having <laughs> luck today with my finding pictures. This one right here is the one that I finished. So I try to do a minimum of a thousand slash 10 days, thousand stitches slash 10 days on a full coverage. I have 15, 16 of them, however many I have. I probably will start several this year because I like to do them and we'll just rotate as we go through. Uh, this one is Laszlo Cote number one, and it is uh, charted by Stitches So Beautiful. And 
I think they're all just Laszlo Cote as the artist. So there's one through 11 or 12 or th I don't remember how many because she recently put up a couple on Stitch is So Beautiful. There's no specific name to it. It's a good size though. This one is not huh, one of the smaller ones. As you can see, I have lots of extra fabric, but I've got it folded over just to show you where I am. And that's as far as I went over. Yep. So this is where I'm finishing this rotation. Now, all of my full coverages are done on 18 count white Ada, two strands over one full cross. And this time around, so last time you saw it, I kind of focused bringing it here and I finished the moon. This time I decided to kind of work down this way. So they're kind of grays. There's, there'll be some light purples in there, lilacs and things like that. I decided to kind of work my way down this way. If you're new for full cover, let me show you this piece. This is huge. You can see I didn't iron all of it. <laughs> uh, this is a big piece. This is going to take me quite some time. Um, full coverage. I do like to do the three corners if I can. Now, it would be much smarter to go across because that's first. Because that's obviously a lot shorter than this one. Of course, leave it to me. The last time I worked on it, I'm going down the long side of the piece rather than the short side. But I think I wanted a different color. I spent a whole week working on this purple because I think it's all one uh, besides doing this. So I think I wanted something else, which is why I pulled out the grays. So this one will go away now and uh, we'll see when it comes out again. They might come out for prompts. These are not ones that I generally pull so much out for prompts. Sometimes it's just, oh, I feel like stitching on this piece for this time. And so that's when it gets pulled out. All right, next. I had recently started this one and I wanted to give it some more. I mean, Valentine's is over, but I'm not necessarily a seasonal stitcher, so I don't really care. Uh, this is V's for Valentine and it is Heartstring Samplery. And I am changing the colors on this one. So I don't know if when I started it, I put the color changes. So I need to do that. It is charted in all, oh, what is it? There's Gentle Arts and Weeks Dye Works. They do give a DMC conversion, but I wasn't loving the DMC conversion, to be honest with you. I wanted the colors to be a little bit redder, a little bit pinker. I do like the uh, the words are going to be and the basket's going to be in, I don't know if it's 823. And I do like that navy. Let me see. 839, 823. Which one is it? 823. So I will keep that. I think it was charted for an onyx. So I like that. And that'll go nicely with the colors I picked. I do think I changed, I might have changed the green as well. So if you're interested, check down below uh, with the description in the description box especially if you're not going to use the over dyes and you would like to try to do dmcs uh did i say 18 count just vintage country mocha i really liked the colors on this kind of shade and so i felt like using one of my uh fabrics that were more colors i felt my take away from it this time around i'm generally fairly deliberate you know by now in the colors of fabrics I like to use. And uh, sometimes I just want that neutral. I, that's what I want to show my pieces. So this happened to be one of those times. I really like this one. I had seen it stitched, it, you know, here it's pretty, but I had st seen it stitched on um, Mary's Stitching Corner and Mary's looked so beautiful. It, it's so funny how I always hear people say like when they go to a shop and they saw a piece and you know, I mean, they saw it in the pattern and yeah, it was all right, but then they saw the model and it just sold them on it. And it really is true. Some pieces are just so pretty stitched up. Mary prob Mary does like to use over dyed, so she might have used the, the called for. I don't remember. This was quite some time ago, but it was just so pretty. And I said, that's it. Uh, you've sold me on it. <laughs> all right, next. So this one was not, this is part of my four piece rotation. It wasn't due for this week, but I pulled it out because I wanted to finish up prompts on the magazine monthly cross stitch challenge and crafts and books. They had the two different acrostics I was able to, I had the same letter left. I think it was E and the animals all have eyes. So I think that's what I used it for. And I love stitching on this one. So, um, it wasn't a hardship <laughs> to pull it out. 
let me pull this a little bit over so you can see I'm starting to get, although it's not too much farther. Once you get to the ship here, you've got a couple of seagulls, a lighthouse and the border. So it certainly won't go all the way to the edge here. That's what it looks like. If I just show it to you like that, and then let me fold it over so I can come a little closer and see what I'm talking about. So that's where it is. This is an 18 count, let me look, blue green. It was a blue, it was from a blue green pack from Dying for Cross Stitch on Black Friday of last year, 2023. So it was a set of three and they had blues and greens in them. And I just love it. I am using DMC White Floche. And if you want to see what that looks like, stay tuned to hang around until I get to the shopping. Because I got a little worried <laughs> that I was going to run out. So I did order another skein, I guess. Is, they're, they're big. I'll show you when I get there um, of this. So uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Because it's the Floche, it's thicker. So I use one strand. It is one stranded. And I just use that one strand on the 18 count. And this time around, I worked my way this way. I was debating on the little whale. I did pick up some white sulky for the back stitching because I don't know if you can really tell. I used some of the floche on the back stitch up to now and it was a little thick. I think for that, the sulky is a little bit thinner than the floche. I think it'll look good for the back stitch. But I, I got this shipped it in for the most part. Um, nope, this little guy didn't get finished yet. There's a little fish right there. I'm, I probably was thinking I'm going to go across this way. Then what I'll do is I'll bring the border across, you know, turn the corner and start bringing the border down and work that way with it. I am definitely one, I'm a back and forth border stitch, border stitch, border stitch. Not so much that I get bored, but I'm really, I don't know if worried's the right word, but I'm concerned that everything's not going to line up. So, and which is really good that I did because I had a mistake here on this piece originally because I wasn't reading the chart right because there's on long dog, which is my first long dog. Um, both sides are grayed out and I in my brain I didn't really register that that one of them has to be however I did it I did it wrong and it was by counting off of the border that I realized that so I was able to pull out I had to pull out quite a bit of this maybe some of this I can't remember now and restitch that area oh I had to I had to fit, I think this fish had to come out too part of it so for me I really like that back and forth with the border Plus, you know, this way it does, you know, if you do get a little bit bored with borders, um, it gives me a chance to kind of go back and forth and switch and stay interested. So, yeah, so this actually is the up for the rotation this week. So you will see this again next week um, and it should have at least another 500 stitches in it. Now that we are in March, I'll have to look to see if I can add that for some of my props as well. And we'll talk about some of the challenges when we get to plans. Okay, next. So next, let's go with my second full coverage to show you. And this one right here, this is called Bottled Beauty. It is from Cross Stitch for Everyone, and the artwork is from Fun Digital. You know me in the ocean. You know me in all of that kind of anything nautical, oceany always catches my interest. Now this one, I use the term small relatively, but I bet you there are samplers that are bigger than this. Look at this is the fabric. That's it. That's it. So this one will be relatively small, probably half the size of some of my other full coverages. And so this is what it is fully. I didn't come over here at all. So I'm just going to fold that over. Uh, 18 count white Ada, two strands over one full cross again. This Ada now though, I've used it enough. It's a little bit, it's not as soft as the one that I'm using. Hidden Harbor is, oh, it's so soft. It's really nice to work on that one, but this one's getting there. It's much uh, easier to manipulate. It's not as uh, stiff and unwieldy. So we're just filling in all the colors. What I really like, if you look at the picture, and then you look at the charted colors, they are, you know, I mean, obviously I'm still way up in that corner 
and I'm starting to work my way down. But sometimes when you have charted color, uh, charted full coverages or anything really, because I've heard people talk about this with other patterns, the colors don't necessarily, the picture looks one way and then, you know, you, you start stitching and sometimes it's not as vibrant. Like that's a vibrant piece with vibrant colors. And these I feel like really do show as vibrant as the picture. So I appreciate that because sometimes it's a little, you know, it's still pretty, but maybe it's a little disappointing if you wanted something that was really vibrant and it ends up not quite looking the same way uh, as what it looked like in the chart. So this one here, this one's done, right? No, no, this one is not done. This probably has about, th I, I started it probably right around the time I filmed last week. Um, so it's got either like two, three days more. I've been really concentrating here a lot on this area. There's several colors that get mixed in, which I don't know if you, you can tell. So I fill in one and then I start filling in another and just kind of working my way. I was gonna work down, except I haven't pulled all of the, the DMCs for this yet. And I clearly hadn't pulled what came next because I didn't have what I needed. So I'm not sure if I'll focus on here with the colors I still have. Maybe I'll pull in a few more and, and start going there. So there'll be a little bit more to this one. I haven't looked at the numbers. I keep track, but I don't count how much I've done on the full coverages until I get to the end of, oh, whoops. That's my long dog. Uh, let me put that in so I have everything together. Um, I don't count the numbers until after the rotation is over. As long as I, I'm doing 100 a day, then I know I'll have my 1,000 that I need for the rotation. Um, and sometimes I get more, so then I really don't worry about it if I'm in a groove. Sometimes with those, if there's, if there's nice good chunks of blocks of color, I'll just keep going and keep stitching with it. And... Um, then see quite a bit of progress. Okay, what's next? Okay, sometimes I can't find these because my fabric is different than what the model is. And I'm looking for the overall color of my fabric and I'm totally going over what the, what the stitch is. So this one here is Nautical Tear by Erin Elizabeth. And this one is actually, I had originally thought for 2024 to get through that bottom at least. And then I'd only have this little area left. I think I can revise this 2024 goal to be a finish. These are smaller than you realize. So when you start stitching them, there's a lot of color changes. Not going to lie about that. So be ready to kind of stop and start, stop and start. But they're small. Now I'm stitching on 18 counts. So you're going to see this is, I'm not going to say it's an ornament size because it's not, but it's small. Uh, so it definitely you know, you're not stitching a big giant piece, kind of like my, my Wizard of Oz tree, which is not giant, but it's kind of more medium. That one has, is bigger, has more heft to it. This one is, I don't even know if it's half the size of that, probably even less than that. So, so that's where I am. So you can see the, the uh, model there is, it's got a black background. I wanted something that was more, mm, watery you know something along those colors of some sort of water ocean to hit the whole nautical theme so this one is 18 count it's compelling conscious and it's from those missing stitches and this week i we got kind of the kind of what are they called beach houses you know how they like the beach huts the ones I don't know if they're supposed to be like changing huts or or whatever. I've got I got that done on that side. I got the seagull. Is he completely done on that side? Oh, I think I just have oh I have the eye, and then I think there's a little bit more back feather there. I did complete the whole bottom. I finished some of here and started my work my way down here. So I skipped. I think I went here and I went over here because the crab has a lot of color changes and it's a little fiddly. So we have sandcastle with a um, shovel. So I think what I might do is the sandcastle because the color of the shovel is the same, similar colors to the crab. So pull that in and then pull those and pull that over. And I do have another row of the lacy at the bottom, which takes a little bit because you do have to count. And then we come down and it's just all different types of shells, a little bit of backstitch, not much. 
So this this could very well be a um, 2024 finish. It really should be. So uh, I'm going to revise that goal that I had set. If you had watched my whip parade uh, at the beginning of the year, I had loosely set, I had 75 projects. I had loosely set goals. Nothing is ever set in stone of pieces that I thought I could finish. Some may not get finished this year because they just don't get the work. And then others like this that I hadn't set as a finish. I'm not sure the, the poppies one because I was concerned about really getting bored with the border. I don't know if that was set as a finish either. So it'll it'll ebb and flow. Um, some of the goals will be met. Some will be exceeded. Some not so much, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. This was the piece that I was going to make for the next two weeks, my 25-7. But I think I do want to make the gnome just for the month of March, the 25-7, where I just work on it for 25 minutes a day. That's just a couple strands. There's chunks of color. I'll just pick one of the colors and work on it. This one I'll just kind of pull out. The reason why I was going to do this is 25-7. So this is the monthly cottage garden samplings that I'm working on, all the different floral ones. Is it flower journal? My garden journal. March's daffodils. I had, I filled, I pulled this out for the end of the month. One, to get it started, to, to try to get it March finish. Because I looked at my goals and I did not have this set as a March finish because I was concerned I had too much to do. Plus categories, the letter was D. So I used daffodils as the flower. Um, I'm a little scatterbrained when I'm stitching this one. I go back and forth and I can't decide where I want to stitch on this. So I think that's why I had said, hmm, maybe if I make it a 25-7, then I'm only doing a strand or two and each day I can jump to something else. Maybe I try a strand a day on this one and do the 25-7 on the other one. If you're new, I stitch on multiple pieces a day. I don't take one piece and stitch on it for the entire day. I could easily stitch on four or five different projects in the course of a day. Cause I go, I do a little bit, then I go about my, whatever I need to do. Then I come back to stitching and it's, I never sit for, unless I'm zooming, then I'll, I'll sit for, you know, a nice chunk of time, whatever the zoom is, or I can stay for generally though, or if I'm watching a movie or something like if Mo and I are watching a movie, but a lot of times I'm up and back and forth. So, um, you know, I want to stitch, then I've got an appointment. Like yesterday I had to, I stitched, then I had to go get blood work. Then I stitched, then I had an appointment or whatever day it was. And, you know, so, it, or no, yesterday was, I after that I stitched and then I went to uh, my neighborhood kind of stitching thing. And so it was just, it was back and forth and all over the place. So generally I'll pick something for a little bit and then I go on to something else. And so that's why these are good when I have a little bit of a time, little time. So maybe I have... 20 minutes or whatever, 15 minutes, and I do a strand. So maybe I will add that in too. We'll see. I might get tired of that. But I would like to, I think I could get this finished because I mean, March is a long month, right? And we're just starting it. It's only the first. So I don't, I'm not sure I, I really could see why this wouldn't. Uh, 18 count lilac mist from hand dyed from by Rolanda. Uh, if I hadn't had as much of the words done, from last year, I think I would have recharted it and done it different colors, but that was pretty much all done. I just started a little bit now in the next row. Um, there's three more words. It's not worth it to me to rip all that out. That would take me a long time. So I got a little bit of that. Um, I added another flower. I think we added some more yeah, we added some border and there's a bird. So this is going to be a tall bird, a birdhouse with, you know, the pole right there. And then um, this is all greenery. So I did a little bit more of that, I think. So I did a little, I, like, as you can see, I, I literally jumped in every direction on this piece because I just couldn't settle. So, so yeah. I'm under no illusion that all of them will get finished this year, all 12. It will be a really nice bonus if I do, to be honest with you. But um, some of them, especially I think over the summer, <laughs> I don't think I started them till mid-month and I'm not sure how much work they actually got in. So uh, that might be a bit of a stretch, but that's okay. They're going to be scrapbooked as a collection. So it's not, it's not the end of the world if they're not done this year. 
Next, I pulled out, I couldn't decide for eyes if I was going to do fish and chips or Ruskin's penguins. I think I wrote down fish and chips, but I'm going to say both of these patterns kind of contribute to that part of the acrostics. This is from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I'm, I'm still in border. Um, there's a lot of stitching to the border, to be honest with you. And it doesn't look like I did much, but I probably got in 300 stitches, to be honest with you. Um, I don't, I never have the numbers with me. Plus I stitch on them sometimes multiple days. So then I'd have to sit down and do all of the addition. And, and mine is not, I'm not a good spreadsheet person. I'm, I'm, I lasted one week in accounting class. That's in college. And I completely said, that's it. Nope, I'm out of there. <laughs> I am definitely more <laughs> histories, Englishes, all of that uh, versus uh, maths, which is ironic because I have a master's in science. So I did have to do a lot, a lot of science. But, you know, why not be contrary? But anyway, I don't do any spreadsheets. I have it in my planner and I write down how much, you know, each one at the end of the day got stitched. And then if I wanted to know in the course of a week, I'd have to count up the multiple days, which is what I do when I do the full coverage pieces. So that's where I am. I love, I'm so happy I picked this fabric. I only stitched on the black, which I am using anchor as opposed to 310. I had originally stitched on a little white because I was just curious. I mean, I figured it would look good on this fabric, but I just decided to go, there's way more black on the border than white so I think I may do quite a bit of the that and then really kind of go to town filling in all the white and then on the inside there's a lot of white obviously because there's a lot of snowflakes this is an 18 count it's called mermaid's dream from to die for fabrics just as a reminder to die for fabrics is taking a break on hand dyeing this year don't confuse them with dyeing for cross stitch those are two different companies and dyeing for cross stitch is still dying this year I have links and information and all of that down in the description box. Generally, the fabrics, which I label as some of my favorite fabrics, is at the very, very bottom. So you just have to scroll all the way down. But I love it. I the My concern was twofold, right? I didn't want it too light that the white, I mean, the white's fine in between with the black. But with the snowflakes, you need the white to show. So I didn't want it too light that way, but I didn't want it too dark because I didn't want the black to fade in. So I feel like this is a good happy medium where the black really pops and then the white is really gonna pop as well too. I am so excited about, I mean, really. One can't be angry when one looks at a penguin. That is just the most adorable piece. I know there is a modern folk embroidery stitch along I think it's Jacob, Jacob's sleeper style. I don't know how much this one would be considered a sleeper because I think a lot of people have stitched it. Whereas I think the idea was to find pieces that generally don't get stitched a lot. So I'm not sure I meet the, the brief, so to speak, for that, um, for that stitch along. But I am stitching a modern folk in spirit. Now, are you sitting? You haven't seen this one in a while. <laughs> I know some of you are so... I know some of you think I am never going to get this one finished. I do have a goal of finishing it in 2024, so I just have to kind of buckle down. But it is Cinnamon Stars from Plum Street Samplers. Yes, I pulled this one out. So on Whip Warriors, one of their challenges, it was kind of a pop-up challenge. It wasn't um, announced at the beginning of the month. They did kind of a Lonely Hearts challenge for the end of the, it was probably three days in the last week of February. And it was basically pick one or multiple, however you wanted to do it, projects that kind of, they're a little bit lonely because they don't get your company and attention very often. And so, you know, this was the first one I thought of. And so I pulled this one out. <laughs> I don't think I'll get credit for it in Whip Warriors because I don't think I filled the thing out correctly, but I don't care, whatever. <laughs> I got stitching in, so that's what counts. And it got some work. Part of my issue is... These shades are a little bit mm, primer than what mm, I generally stitch with now. And I'm okay with that. Like, I, I'm fine with that. That doesn't really, that's not an issue. But the pumpkins, the DMC alternatives were, like one of them was 433, I think, or one of the browns, 435. And I was just, I just don't want a brown pumpkin. And I just 
you know, wasn't really a fan of the striped pumpkin. And when we buy pumpkins, they're the orange. Orange pumpkin, they don't have to be bright in your face, which I tried not to find a, a floss that was. But I hemmed and I hawed for probably a good year. And so when I was shopping on Roxy Floss Co. for my dragon stitch, I found, and I said, I'm going to give this a try. And it's called Jack O' Lantern. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do my pumpkins in that. And so that's what I've been doing. You can tell I have no idea because I don't use the variegators how to pull these things off. So I actually, I had pulled it off and just pulled from there and then just put it back in. I don't know all the tricks of all your fancy flosses and all that. Um, so here we go. I don't have them all done because there's a lot of pumpkins. I did not realize how many pumpkins there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven and a half are done. I don't know how many more I have. As you can see, they're all going to be the same color. I do have to go back and stitch the little stems, but that's fine. Not an issue. When I get there, oh, the end is then, the end is in sight. I, I do have to go back. I think, oh, no, just one. Just one of these little guys that needs its center. But all these little stars, I think I skipped the centers because some of them are the same color. So when I pull out that floss, I'll do it. I need to finish my scarecrow. This will be pumpkins all the way to here. And then I have corn stalks right here. I'm going to keep the uh, windows unstitched because this fabric, you know, kind of looks like there's lights on and it, it's fine. It, it looks nice and it blends in that way. So I don't feel like I need to add anything there. But this was, and I didn't, I'm not adding the initial. <laughs> True confession time. So I wasn't really pay, paying attention. Sometimes I just stitch and I just stitch away. And you'll see there it's an S. I didn't register that it was an S. I just thought it was some little curly Q <laughs> going with all of the other stuff <laughs> until I stitched it. Well, technically O'Shea, but we go by O, obviously. So that doesn't work. And in the end, I said, nah, I don't need a stray letter anywhere. So I pulled it out. It looks fine. I was originally going to add another little one of these kind of star things. I don't think it needs it. I don't think looking at it, you'd even know. And luckily, I pulled it out and it's it looks good enough that you wouldn't know that there was something stitched there. So I don't have to fill it in. So that's not going in. <laughs> but I did have to kind of laugh at myself because I had no idea I was stitching a letter until the letter was in. <laughs> 18 count honey amber did I say that by fabrics by Stephanie it is the same exact fabric I used for Betsy's autumn basically just cut the piece in half and use it for each so I'll have a nice little bottom half for either smalls or trading cards or something and uh yeah this did say it needed a 2024 finish or it was going to get one uh was what my goal was from the whip parade and I think I think it's doable now I think we can all finally say that I am hitting on that last that last quarter mile of the race, right? So to speak. I mean, obviously nothing is a race when it comes to stitching, but um, we're getting there. Oh, nope, that's not what I want. Very last piece I started for, what did I start it for? Leap day. I know there's all sorts of official leap day stitch alongs out there I'm not necessarily following any of them. I'm not going to, this is a full coverage. There's no way. If I just did it on the 29th of every month, it'd probably take 50 years. So um, I'm just stitching it when I feel like it'll go in the rotation. So it will get at least a thousand stitches to start with. So you'll see this again next week. Uh, this was a freebie for Valentine's Day from Heaven Earth Designs. Um, it, it, it was created by Mich Michelle Sayeta, who is Heaven and Earth Designs. And it's just Valentine 2024 Venus, I think it's called. Now, it's so funny because somebody had mentioned that, you know, who knew a serpent would look so pretty? And it, it could very well be a serpent. When I saw it first, I saw a dragon, and you know I'm into dragons. So we're just going to call this kind of a dragon serpent. And so I loved the colors and I kind of like the look of it and it's different than my other dragons. So we do have a hashtag that's hashtag never, never enough dragons stitch along, which basically means any dragon you ever stitch. I kind of, I do that kind of, I have my stitch Barbara Anna, you know, I don't necessarily have stops and starts for some of these. I just want to do an over encompassing uh, kind of thing. And so I could see dragons being in my rotation of projects 
because I love them all the different looks and they're so fun and uh, I think for I Spy you're gonna see my Celtic Dragon maybe next week so keep an eye out for that but I have a very small start I obviously just started it yesterday <laughs> that's it I think it's 200 maybe 250 stitches 18 count white Ada, two strands over one it is big so I thought about doing it on 20 because I do have one piece of 20 count but I'm thinking I want to start something smaller full coverage on 20 first. Make sure I like it <laughs> rather than doing it on a big, big piece. So that's it. They're pretty colors up there, to be honest with you. I like those. Um, there's one that's more greenish and one that's like a 931. You know that blue. So um, you'll see some bottled beauty that I have a few more days of that. I'll continue with this one and then I may or may not once Bottled Beauty is done, throw another one into the rotation. Uh, we'll see. And uh, um, 1,000, maybe 1,500. Maybe I'll keep this out for a little bit longer just to get that little bit of a start. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. Any of the new starts I don't have really specific goals on. So that's my stitching. So let's talk plans. I had said fish and ships, so you will see that. Uh, for full coverage, you'll see a little bit more Bottled Beauty and... The Valentine Venus, maybe another one, I'm not sure. 25-7, um, I do think I'd like that St. Patrick's gnome. I think that would, be, that would work well. And we'll see if a strand a day works for that March's daffodil. Um, I don't know. We'll see, I don't know if just pulling it out for that one, if it was monochromatic, I could see doing that. But because it's not... We'll see how well that works. But I do want to, I am pushing for a finish this month. So I would like to get that finished. Other than that, the March challenges have started. Uh, what did I do for February? So my February challenges, I did halfway decently. So here was my February book, my challenge book. Oh, I didn't, I didn't do it, uh, color it in, but I did finish the magazine monthly cross stitch acrostic. So I did work on all of those. I did get that filled in. For categories on Whip Warriors, I got seven completed out of the 12. I don't think I put them all on the on line on Facebook, but that's fine. <laughs> to me, my book is, is when I finish things is when I uh, uh, count it more. I did get my 750 stitches in for Late Night Stitchers. I worked on Fish and Ships. And I did work on Colorado Cross Stitchers Winter Camp. And I did the Quirky Quaker Queen Bee. February stitch alongs. The only two I have listed are your Be Your Own Valentine Sal stitch along and the Year of the Dragon stitch along. I don't have anything. I'm going to put down my Never Enough Dragons, right? Isn't that what I said? Never Enough Dragons, Sal. Or Never Too Many Dragons. I don't remember. What did I say? I don't know. Somebody had recommended it in the comments and I need to go back because as soon as I saw it, I said, that's brilliant. <laughs> I want to do that. So I have to look and see back in the comments. Um, and then the Hawk Run Hollow, it's sort of a leap day or it was March 1st because I'm starting that today, hopefully, or this weekend. Uh, I'll put that in the March stitch alongs. Crafts and Books, I finished that acrostic. So I did get that one done. And then the I Spy, which is from me, I finished all of the Februarys. So now this will be my March cover page, which I haven't decorated yet. Uh, I did not fill out any of the other acrostics. Um, Magazine Monthly, the balloon is the acrostic. Although if you really wanted to, you could do hot air balloon, but I'm just going to do balloon. Crafts and Books, it's St. Patrick. Uh, the categories letter is the letter E. And then I Spy, I did fill this out so I could show you this. Now, my writing is not easy to read sometimes, but I have all 10 prompts ready to go. If you go to my community tab, you have two places you can see it. You know, I mean, you could certainly try to screenshot that. But reading my writing, like I said, sometimes can be an issue. Uh, if you don't mind Facebook, I do have a Facebook page. It's called Stitching by the Shore, Laura. You can certainly feel free to join. You know, we don't just do the challenge. Uh, you know, people are encouraged to show their stitching. And, you know, we talk about other things and so on and so forth. But... There is in the events section, the March I Spy. You'll find all of the information plus the prompts and that's where you would list, you know, if you wanna do the pictures and practice doing all of that and show everybody what you're do stitching on, you do it in the events section. If you don't wanna do Facebook, if you go to my community tab on YouTube, 
I did do a post a couple days ago and I listed all the prompts out. So you are more than welcome to do it that way. You do not have to be on Facebook. Everything I do, I try to include everybody. I don't want you to feel like you're forced to join anything. You're not um, comfortable joining. So um, feel free to look there. If you tried to screenshot and you can't read my writing and you wanna reach out, that's fine too, um, no problem. I am doing 200 stitches per prompt, but you don't have to. You pick your goal. You could do a thousand stitches per prompt. You can do 10 stitches per prompt. Maybe each prompt is a little bit different. It's really up to you. This is just for us to have a little fun each month and maybe touch a bunch of our projects. So, and maybe if you can fit all 10 in one, you could get a lot of work depending on what your prompt is on that one project. Maybe you're a, you know, a monogamous stitcher. See what you could do and see what you could fit in there. So those are the challenges. Um, the only group that is not open is Whip Warriors that won't open till mid-November, end of December, so beginning of December, somewhere there. Crafts and Books is certainly open for everybody to join, and so is Magazine Monthly Cross Stitch Challenge, as well as mine. So if you want to be on some of these groups, they're both lovely groups as well. Uh, the other two groups, I think you would enjoy them if you like to do just stitching or anything on Facebook. So that's kind of the plans. Happy Mail. I hadn't, I, I had... This, um, this is Sherry. Sherry had made this and she had sent it with her um, training card, but I had it with all of her stuff, her self-addressed stamped envelope and everything. And so I was going through all of them and I pulled it out. Isn't that adorable? Yes, this was handmade. It is so cute. Uh, that's a lot of work to get that, to be honest with you, because that is all different pieces and she built the bear basically. And, uh, you know, then had to do the, the little kind of snowflakey things and everything else. So I love this. This is going to go up, up here so I can look at it. But I wanted to make sure I showed that to you because I thought it was super cute and I hadn't showed it before. The other thing was I got a nice box and I'm going to just say from a stitchy friend because I didn't, um, I didn't ask if I could say her name. So she, very pretty card. Look at that. I can't remember if, because some people send me this card. Yes, this art, this card and artwork is actually um, from one of their sisters. So how cool is that? That they have cards from the artwork of their sister. I think that's so neat. And they very generously cleaned out their uh, stitching, uh, some patterns and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Although I thought this was cool and I had never seen this one before. This is Carolyn Manning. St. Patty's Day Pine. We do have to tell Carolyn though that St. Patty's Day, it's never P-A-T-T-Y. It's P-A-D-D-Y. That's the official. That is a little pet peeve. But anyway, it's not cool. That's really neat. But um, some of these, you know, she had said stitch, keep, giveaway however you know one day if I ever get to a treat if I want to put any of them on the, the what is it the freebie table I've never been to a treat so I don't know these things so you will see some of these in the future thank you so much and then at the bottom of the box so I was going through and it was like oh it's just like Christmas morning each one get being able to look at them but then at the bottom of the box look at this look at look at this bag and then I have to show the bag <laughs> It says rip it, rip it <laughs> with the frog pulling out the stitches. <gasps> that is awesome. I got such a good chuckle and this fabric is so good on the front. <laughs> so I have to pick a project that I have. Oh, you know what? Stone Street Stitch should go in this one, the librarian's house, because I, it's going to take me forever to rip out that, that um, roof. <laughs> but I need a project that I know I have to pull out stuff. So that was my happy mail. Thank you very much. This was lovely. And um, I appreciate being able to share these patterns with all of our stitchy friends. So they will definitely, you will see giveaways coming up with those in the future. Then shopping. I had two pieces of shopping. One, let's do the fabric of the month from Be Stitch Me. That came yesterday. If you don't want to see, if you don't like um, if you want to be surprised, I'm not a surprise person. I like being, I like getting the spoiler alerts or spoilers, which is, I don't know, that's, I don't know what that says about me, but, um, 
But if you do like to be surprised, look away right now. And oh, you can't see you can't see the the words because the of the title. Uh, but this is the it's eighteen count. I'm not going to say the name because if you read it fast, I don't know if you can see it through the staple. It actually does give you the name of the color, and I don't want to spoil that. <laughs> Originally, I was like, that's kind of an odd name for a fabric. And then I read it fast, and I said, oh, that's what that is. That was tricky, but quite clever. Then I did order the Floche, I said, from 123 Stitch. So I want to show you that. This is what the Floche looks like. This is Blanc. So it comes in this size, and it is just single stranded let me see well I don't know where the end is but you can see single strand so you just pull the single strand as you go and that's what the label looks like one two three stitch if you go there you can see a bunch of the different colors I did buy two other colors that I want to show you I was thinking for my Aston Villa stitch I don't want to talk too loud on that um they had this blue which I think would work but they didn't have a claret and then I realized I also need a yellow for the lion. So I, if I don't use it for that, I have a couple other ideas. I could see the Floche I really like. I want to do more monochromatics, to be honest with you. And I really like using the Floche like I have on Fish and Ships. And then I am, I love Hunter Green. It was one of my wedding colors. Um, so anytime I can get greens, and this was... Basically, it's DMC. It's the same numbers as what the smaller DMC is. This is 319. Isn't that? So they don't have all the colors, which is sadly why I don't think I can get a, a maroon slash claret. But um, uh, there is something I want to do potentially with that green. I have a few options with greens that I would like to do. In theory, I actually could use this green for the... Um, Oh, that the next four season piece that I'm going to do, you know, I'll leave this out. Obviously, I'll need to buy some more Floche probably because one skein is not going to do it for the four pieces. But maybe I'll do that for that um, since it's going to be a purely monochromatic piece. I did pick up one chart. I didn't have number three, uh, the greenhouse in the Cottage Garden Sampling's Fabulous House series. I would not stitch it on that color. I'll stitch it on something else to really make the greenhouse pop. I did see number four. It's cute. I don't, I don't have like, um, automatic shipping for those. I've been waiting to see each one and then, um, I'll order them within. I don't want to pay shipping for each one separately, to be honest with you too. So I can just stick it in an order. Uh, lots of places will have it when it's ready. And then I did pick up, um, some fiber on a whim. I really wanted to, I mostly, it's mostly 20 count actually. You know, I can't have enough blues. So this is 20 count stream. This one, I'm curious what I'll use it for. This is 20 count silver fox. It's more of a warmer gray as opposed to, I like the cool grays. Could you say it's almost a green? It is almost one of those. So maybe I'll kind of look at it in that way rather than looking at it as a gray, more of a green. And then this is the one I am, I think I'm going to do the stitch for Mo. <laughs> um, I don't know if he, he can hear me talking downstairs because he's working, but I don't know if he can hear the words. But um, so that's why he knows when I'm filming not to come upstairs. Um, this is 20 count stone. I'm thinking I'm going to do it in 20 count. I, I, I realized with the chart that I have found, I think I'm going to have to kind of chart it myself. I'm going to pull out graph paper. <laughs> Actually, I'll probably have to print off some graph paper. Um, cause I don't have any. And then I think I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way and cut and count and figure out what I'm doing to see if this will. And so I don't know if this will work. What size is this piece? 18 by 20. Oh, I hope so. I hope it's not that big a stitch. I'll never get it finished for September. And then I really liked the stream so much that I did get it in an 18 count. So if you want to see, I don't know if there's much of a difference. They say that eight, a 20 count is usually darker. So there you go. This is the 20. This is the 18. Maybe not too much of a difference. Slightly, the modeling is slightly darker on this one than it is on this one. So, 
um, and actually the 18 count, you get more. That's why it looks bigger. You get 18 by 28 piece rather than an 18 by 20. So, so that is my one, two, three stitch order, mostly fabrics. And again, I'm trying to build up some of the 20 count, uh, for the floche. I do like 18 count, uh, one strand, but I do, I have done 20 count one strand with the regular DMC. And I think I could, it would look nice too with Sulky, which is the other thing I did pick up. Little crinkle because I didn't want these. I'm not even showing you. I did pick up some DMCs that my Michaels never has. But I did pick up a few other colors of Sulkies. I have two different, so again, I'm not sure. So I picked two different maroons. One of those probably would be a good claret. And I do have this blue, so I think one of those but I didn't realize I needed the yellow. So I need to go back and look and maybe pick up a yellow. That will that will be the lion. And then that'll be all the colors. And then, you know, just for fun, I picked up, you know, a couple of colors, more tealies and blues. I also picked up kind of similar to that hunter green, the 319. I picked this up in case I wanted to do that set with sulky, which is another option. I don't have to do it with the floche. And then a couple of variegateds. I don't know how I ended up with the bigger size on this one, but one of I didn't pay attention when I was ordering them apparently. So we have lots of different blues right there. And then this one has blues and greens. So it's definitely highly variegated. So that was that was the shopping. It was mostly extras, just the one pattern. Um, I'm not pre-ordering anything. I'm kind of there's a thing, there's a couple that I really do like, but I've decided that I am not going to spend the money on them pre-order and I'm, I'll probably wait a few months to be quite honest with you on that. Um, I don't need them. I have plenty to stitch. I don't feel the need to absolutely start any of them right away. So why not just wait? All right. So that is my shopping. So giveaways, I did have to recall. So I heard from everybody, but one out of my 5,000 giveaways the, the only person I didn't hear from was the one for the $20 top knot stitcher giveaway. So I had to redraw that. And you know what? I'm just going to use my, my notebook here. So you don't want to see that it was top knot. The, so I redrew and I got a new winner. And the winner is Hannah Scarborough. And I'm not sure what number it said behind your name, 9299. So Hannah Scarborough, Hannah, if you could get back to me with whatever email address you would like me to send your $20 top knot stitcher gift card to, I will do that. My giveaways are for two weeks. And if I don't hear from you, you know, and I'm not saying you, Hannah, but in general, if I don't hear from the winner within two weeks, I do go and I pick another. I'm scatterbrained enough as <laughs> I feel like the older I get, the more scatterbrained. I was never really a scatterbrained person. I can't keep track of all of this stuff. It's got to move out and just keep things moving. So two weeks. Um, and then this past week, the flosses, where are they? Let me grab this stuff over here. They're the Roxy Floss Co. Inappropriate and Cheeky. Oh, and look it. Which one is very similar. So Cheeky, a mm, little bit brighter than my sweater. Inappropriate, a little darker. Our winner here was Mary Ellen Vieira. Did I say that right, Mary Ellen? I don't know what numbers are after your name. 165. So Mary Ellen, if you could get back to me with your address, please, so that I can send those out to you. So I'm going to put your name with those. And then this week, what do we have for this week? So it's, it's March. You know, you got a certain color scheme. These are in plastic. I'm going to keep them. So there is a tiny piece. I had picked up a scrap when I was at Salty Yarns. It's actually really long. It's 15 and a half, 15 and a quarter by six of, um, it's minty green opal 14 count. So I had picked that up at Salty Yarns last time I was there. So it's a 15 and a quarter by six. So it's a really long piece. I picked that up green for March. And then this is chenille and it's sea spray, a quarter inch chenille from Vintage Needle Arts. It's probably, it's probably had died by her and it's three yards. So this is the giveaway for this week. Uh, because the colors are very much minty, I'm going to ask you to say the word mint, M-I-N-T, mint. And I will choose a winner from that next time we, uh, next time we film. 
I, you know, I had to use the comment pickers for my 5,000 giveaway because that was a lot of names <laughs> and five different giveaways. And I've realized that doing that just makes my prep for my videos a little bit quicker because it takes me a good amount of time Friday mornings to do the prep. So I think going forward, I'm, which I did with Mary Ellen's uh, giveaway, I will, I'm retiring the blue bowl for now and I'm going to do the pick, you know, pick the comments that way. Um, just because that, that is just a little bit easier for me and uh, streamlines my prep and my day a little bit more. So, so yeah, so mint, the word mint. So that's it. That's all of the stitching. If that's all you're here for, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of you um, being here. Life stuff, the, so again, February was a fairly quiet month, which I was all for. Um, I've come to realize that the older you get, there's like a million different doctors you need to see and get checkups and this and that. And so March, April, May is kind of like the months of the doctors. I am going for all sorts of things, just, you know, all screenings and checkups and this and that and you name it and all that other stuff. So I'm going to be in and out a lot. <laughs> And I don't even like going to doctor's offices, so I'm really going to need my stitching. So that's going to be, I was I was kind of savoring, enjoying February because I knew it was going to be quieter. I knew there wasn't going to be as much. And um, come March, uh, it's like some weeks, it's like almost every day I have to be somewhere or other. So um, we'll see how my stitching, I, I got a lot of stitching done in February for being a short month. I'm curious to see. I haven't added up the numbers yet. Um, I have weekly counts, which look pretty good. So I'm curious what the month will be. Um, but uh, March could be a little bit quieter when it comes to that, just because I'm in and out a bit. But, you know, again, it's all, you know, you got to get it done, right? You got to get screened. So you make sure everything's good and you this, that and the other. So there just happens to be a lot of it the older you get. Um, so I've got that. Connor, I believe, <laughs> this is awful. I, I, I really, I'm going to win parent of the year here. I think Connor is on spring break next week. <laughs> that sounds really bad. Um, I think though that instead of coming down here, I think they're going to go to see my in-laws and spend the week with them. Um, I think my in-laws will really, really enjoy that. And I think they could use the company right now. And uh, so I think that's, I think that's what Connor has chosen to do. We haven't done we've gotten some Connor's funny because there's times when they are super independent and then times where we get these texts like I saw a bug fly into my closet should I be concerned how do you answer that <laughs> I don't know because I haven't seen the bug and is it only one and you know but um <laughs> so we haven't had a phone call yet uh I think we're gonna talk I don't know tonight or tomorrow to say hey where are you going? You know, because if it's just to see my in-laws, that's a nice quick hour, little plus drive. So I don't have to worry so much. If the, if the plan is to come down here, that's like a five and a half, six hour drive. And I need to be prepared to worry because, you know, that's what we do when your kids drive six hours alone. Um, so uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But I think it's important right now. I think it would be nice for my in-laws to see Connor and spend some time. And I think Connor could help out a little bit with them right now. So, um, you know, I, 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 for a portion got to spend time with one set of grandparents. I did not with the other. And I think it's, I think it's nice, especially when you get older. I mean, when you're, you know, life gets busy when you're 19, 20, 21, 22, whatever the age is. And you kind of think your grandparents are always going to be there and they're not. So I think it's a really great time in life to spend some time with grandparents. So I am all for if that's what Connor chooses to do. It's only a couple months before the end of the semester. Um, and I mean, with FaceTime and everything else nowadays, you get a chance to spend time with, with so I'll FaceTime Connor this coming week. Uh, anyway, so uh, it's okay. It's good. Um, I think it's important. So, uh, and hopefully maybe then uh, Connor can also take a visit to my mom as well because my mom would be up there as well and visit her in the home. So 
Anyway, that's that. And uh, so I don't know what's happening there. I could have people, somebody here, or I might not. It might just be regular. Um, not much else, to be honest. The first week is okay. March kind of, I ease into it. And then come the second week, I'm all over the place. I'm flitting everywhere. Um, there were supposed to be a couple things this weekend going on, kind of out and about. You know, things are starting now. But one is an outdoor one on Saturday tomorrow and it's supposed to rain all day and I don't feel like going it's rain or shine but I don't feel like being out in the rain so I don't think we'll do that necessarily and then um Sunday is an indoor one at the library so we'll see if I do I'll I'll, I'll chat about it but not too much to talk about um maybe in a few weeks I'll take a trip down to Salty Yarns Mo and I took a drive on Saturday. We wanted to go down to Bethany. There is a kind of a home decor-ish kind of place. And we like to go there to look for things for the house. And I have one side of my fireplace in the living room. I have something. And the other, I wanted something different. You know, I don't want to, I want to do kind of like a non-matching eclectic sort of look. And I had something in my head that that shop had. And unfortunately, they did still have it, but it's too long. It's way too long. If But they... They said you can get it in half the size. They just don't have any right now. And it's the type of thing they have to have it in stock. They can't order it for you. So we were already in Bethany. So we took, um, it doesn't take much longer to go to Ocean City, Maryland. And there is a fantastic Thai restaurant there. So if you find yourself going to Maryland in the Ocean City area and you like Thai food, reach out to me because it's fantastic. And I particularly like it because they have two menus. They have a regular menu and a vegan menu. And so I get the vegan menu everything on that menu I can order. And so, and Mo um, orders from that as well. So we just ordered a bunch of stuff because we know we could bring food home and just do us. We, we like going there for that. And it, the food is fantastically made. So um, we did that and Mo said, well, do you want to go to Salty Yarns? Because it's not in Ocean City anymore, but it's not that far away. I mean, it's in Maryland. And I said, no, I don't. Not right now because um, it's pre- all of the new charts coming in um, after I'm, I don't know if they're actually going to market, if they're just ordering, I don't know what their plans were. And I said, I want to wait to maybe two, three weeks afterwards and see what they get in. And then it'd be fun to go um, down there. Cause I'm not going to say no, if you're going to offer to drive me to salty yarns, <laughs> you know, I'm not silly, <laughs> but anyway, so we didn't do that, but we had a very nice afternoon and it was, it was, it was a nice, it was actually, it was kind of cloudy when we left, but the farther we went down and into Maryland, it was sunny. And then by the time we got up here back home, it was sunny. So it was, I mean, it wasn't super warm, but it was nice enough. It was a nice day. So that was nice. That was our big outing for the week. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's about it. I don't have much else really going on. Um, yeah. I hope you are getting in and got in lots of stitching time while we chatted and I would love to know what you're stitching on, as I said, because it's always so much fun and you always all inspire and enable and all of the above. If I don't know a pattern, that means I need to go Google it because I want to see what you're doing and and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, so, uh, so feel free to share. And uh, that's about it. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. There's a lot of germs going around, lots of, lots of stuff. So stay well, please. <laughs> take care of yourself. Uh, that just means more stitching time. Let's just stay and stitch. Well, you know, we need to. Um, but until next time, happy stitching.